Monday. Welcome to Crypto MC, guys. Today, we want to dedicate the stream to answer three important questions. Is the dip over? When is it going to be safe? We want to be asking ourselves, is it time to invest? And also the last big question we're getting a lot, can I start trading? Guys, these questions cannot be answered in a simple yes and no, so it's going to take some time. But please sit through the stream. Um, you're in good hands. My name is Rudo, also known as the Chart Artist. With me is my trade buddy, Fibonacci Lee. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, how are you? Good. And I see he's got my favorite shirt on, his love shirt. So normally when that happens, uh, the markets tend to respond well. <laughs> I want to bring some love in these markets. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Okay, Lee, um, let's take that noise away. Let's get serious for a little bit. We've come up with a strategy. I think um, quite like the strategy. When it's the Miami conference, we sell the event because it's now the second time the market is dumped on a Miami conference. That's a crazy <laughs> thing. And I mean, you you actually brought that to our attention. So um isn't it a coincidence? Maybe. <laughs> well, I think they had to take some profit or sell some BTCs now for the yard party, you know, so. <laughs> it's quite <as> expensive. <laughs> you never know. Right. Okay. Um, but all jokes aside, I mean, maybe it's just a coincidence. And at the end of the day, um, we are emotional beings, guys. Emotions make us act, can make a rational person act irrational. That's just the way, um, you know, we are hardwired. Um, so to get to the question, is the dip over? I think what we need to do is we need to be looking at the emotional uh, area and, and the emotional space of where we currently find ourselves in. So um, Lee, last week, stock market took a punishment. Crypto obviously took a punishment. Everything is negative. In general, what is your best estimate of how people are feeling? And what kind of people are there that you're, that you're referring to? Because there's always the ones that cheat, that best the market. They're definitely not sharing your sentiment. Yeah, I think sentiment is um, different according to people. I mean, my sentiment right now today is definitely not the same as somebody who just came into crypto last year. Um, because we have experienced this kind of um, press actions. And the buying price or the average buy price of my you know, portfolio and yours, if you just come into this crypto space from 2021, it's also different. So that's true. Yeah. So we, we're going to try to narrow it and try to guess the sentiments of the public and the majority of the people that maybe are following us. And I think there will be um, in crypto from 2000 on um, from last year, 2021. So yeah, let's try and let's try to analyze uh, this according to the Twitter post that we're seeing. And um, yeah, how far, um, how people are reacting to these press actions. So the big question, have we bottomed? So if you look at the emotional market cycle, guys, and this is one of the very rare occasions where something that's floating free out in the internet is actually useful. Why? Because we as human beings are slow to evolve. I mean, um, the way that we evolve regarding emotions, the way we evolve regarding things that are hardwired in our subconscious, subconscious. So when we look at these emotions, and we also know that the market does recycle new people, every cycle actually is built on the premise that everybody that entered in new gets punished at the end. And only the ones that have seen through at least one cycle will be the ones that truly starts capitalizing because you you kind of now have been through the ringer. You understand how these emotions are going to hurt you. In, in a sense, um, you know, that's that's the pretty just the best way that I can experience it. I, I went through a dump, Lee. You went through a dump. That's a horrible feeling. And only once you bump your head really truly because you've got that idea that you can sell the top. You'll, get, you'll have it figured out at that stage. We tend to then have to learn that lesson. And the hard and the sad reality is only one person out of everybody in the market gets to sell the ultimate top. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lotto ticket. 
Okay, so this being said, Lee, um, we're looking at this emotional market cycle, and uh, I brought out my little handy pen tool here, and we've been debating quite ferociously the uh, the theory of where we are within this area over here, and this is a very thick pen today. Let's just bend this down and start again. Um, so we were debating this quite quite hard. And uh, I think the, the general prognosis that we kind of found out in itself is if we are below this line, that's the big question, whether we are below this line. I think realistically we can kind of equate to the fact that complacency has played out. Uh, when we look at... I think at be before that, Rudo, I would like you to put in context what is the bottom and what is the top on, uh, on yes, your emotional true. charts. Let's do, let's do that. Let's quickly put this in context. So we are not talking about the the context of having this in a big cycle where you've got like Bitcoin rallying from $600 all the way up to $20,000 in that sense. That was a market rally that really went crazy. We're talking about within that rally that you see over there, that space. Because I think at this stage, the only thing that, that we can both, you know, without any doubt agree upon is when we look at the previous all-time high to the low and we put a slap of FIP on it, nothing too crazy, slap a FIP on it, that FIP tells me the 1618 extension, there's the, the red line, the 1618 extension, we write above it. That's all that we have. That's the only similarity that we can refer to. So if we look at where we are today, exactly the same thing. When we look at there was the $20,000 Bitcoin or close to $20,000 Bitcoin, there's the low, same FIB, we're sitting above that level. So that's all that we really have. So with that being said, the argument is that we've got a lateral pattern forming over there and a lateral pattern forming over here. Market rhymes, never repeats itself. So is this the rhyme? And with that being said, if we were now to talk about the emotions that we're experiencing today, without the big scheme of things in play, because we seldom feel things that can happen 20 years from now. Otherwise, we'll all be very depressed if you know that you're going to die 20 years from now. So let's start getting depressed over that now. I mean, it's, a, it's an extreme of the emotion or an example, but that's the reality. We tend to have feel emotions why on, on things that are happening to us now. So with that being said, we want to try and dive in like we should, like we would have if we were here around that range into the same emotions because within that smaller time frame, we are also experiencing that same cycle. This cycle doesn't just play out over months, years. It plays out over days and, and, and so forth as well because there's consistently new people entering the market. So when we look at this now, we, we've got a good idea of where we are. Now, if we look at this price action, what we're trying to see is whether we have reached an area within this quite aggressive downtrend that we can equate to the fact that we are close to maybe one of these bottom emotions. And that's the background. Anything I missed there, Lee? Perfect. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that, oops, wrong button there. Uh, now that we've got that, the argument is if we were to buy the bottom and we were supposed to be trading this up, once we reached this area over here, that is when everybody was crying $100,000 Bitcoin before the year end. And people were really doing crazy outlandish things. And and everybody that we knew would obviously fall victim to such cries. I mean, I self, myself had beliefs that it can go. But once it started giving us the failure, that's when we need to be wise about it. And that's when we started saying that, hey, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing if it wants to continue on in that direction. And that emotion that, that signifies that is called complacency. People see the dump, they feel it and say, oh, no, man, just give it some time. It's going to sort itself out. And from that point onwards, we move down. And this is now where it becomes very hard because emotions are relative. Um, 
whether this area over here becomes our anxiety. So let's maybe move this over to the daily, and I think you'll be able to see the picture a little bit better. So if you looked at this range over here, this rally, the, the argument that we have is this is the complacency. And now we had another dump. We had another attempt at it. We couldn't quite stay above the range and we fell again. And this, these emotions, as the market starts going crazier and crazier, these emotions are the ones that we're trying to label to try and feel where we're at. So anxiety, deny, panic, and capitulation. Now, the tough thing is both Lee and myself, we try to pin this to a specific thing because if, if we look at this, areas like the 50s, we had a lot of influences say, you know, buy the dip, it's going to start moving. Did you buy the dip? Can you buy the dip? You should be buying the dip. And then when we went to 40s, we had a lot of people saying, well, um, I'm dollar cost averaging and now it's going to move. And there was still a lot of, um, support behind the fact that it's it's just temporary, we're cooling off. And if we read through these things, this is a lot between anxiety and denial, where people say, I bought great companies, they're good, they're going to do their thing, we just need to wait, it's going to come back. So this is where the big question lies, and, and we honestly won't be able to answer this, Lee, I think, your thoughts? Uh, whether Difficult, it's going to be... Because like I said, we're not sitting in the same position and the same situation like, you know, if you have just come up to, um, come to crypto in 2021. True. So yeah. for me, big picture wise, I'm not experiencing any of these feelings, panic, capitulation, anger. But if I was buying at 55 or at 69 and that was all my savings, I would be experiencing one of these three emotions. And I think that's where we can leave it. And, and that's the sad thing. So you're going to have, as an individual, you're going to need to find your, your way in. But then you also need to ask, if this is the emotion that is predominant within the market, it, it might signal the reality that we're getting to a point where the dip might be over. Because if everybody is around this range over here, if you were looking at anger and, and, and so forth, at that stage, people are saying to themselves that I now know it's going to keep dumping. We are getting a lot of people saying now, now at 20K, now. Only once we moved into the 30s, all of a sudden people flip their dynamic and say 20. And on the rule and rule of thumb that 90% of people get it wrong, it kind of is an early warning sign for us to start saying, okay, right, now we can start looking at DCA, dollar cost averaging in on investment entries. And you can only do that, and I heard this new term, if you stabled up on the way if you had stable coins if you took some profit on the way up so that you can actually buy the steps so lee long story short please give me the end what is your feeling on is the dip over based on people's emotions and the way that they feel well in people's emotion from what i can see on the chat is they are more in the denial and panic stage so if we just based on that which is not over yet Nobody's hating anybody yet. That's the big thing. Because mm -hmm. once capitulation and anger sets in, um, we will see people make videos about being salty. Uh, yeah, our followers are gonna, you know, they can we we do this, we do that, and then you, you get those, you get those those real bad videos. We're not getting them yet, so people aren't angry well, enough. At, at, I, at, I hope at, they're not gonna be angry at us because we <laughs> were able to predict a little bit of this move. Uh, so I'm more yes, watching, you know, the general feed and the, <laughs> the general feed on Twitter. But I mean, I'm I even I'm even watching what other people are saying, influential people, and how they demean them. On there's a few of them that are quite angry and frustrated with the market. So I can see that it's it's currently this is now that brings us to the second two questions. Actually, let's stop. Okay. Is it time to invest in trade? Because these are big things. We need to now have more information before we can truly give you an answer. And the, the goal is how we want to answer those two questions for you is by laying the facts out there, clear and simple, not trying to complicate it by saying you need to have this wave count and that wave count and this level and crazy stuff. Simple facts and then to leave it with you so that we can see as the market prints whether there's going to be more things. So Lee, let's hope that we don't get that hate mail as we as we um, as we said. Uh, before we do that, maybe let's bring up the screen. Um, we did discuss the screen today, 
So what are we getting? We've got extreme fear. We've got a 13 on the fear and greed index. Let's maybe zoom in there. Uh, it doesn't do this very nicely on this chart. But one thing that is interestingly, if you look at the, the market order flow and um, the social index, funny I enough. I think the social index is broken. <laughs> the social <laughs> index, basically all that it states is if it if the market's particip uh, the, the market participants' expectations. So if it's a big dip, generally, and people have not given up yet, they are not in anger and depression. What are they going to try and do? They're going to say, well, let's buy the dip. Maybe this is the right dip. I'll take some money out of my credit card this time around and buy the dip. Because remember, when big anger and these things comes in, is that when I've lost everything, I'm wrecked. We're not there yet. People are still finding something to do there. So it, it for me, it does kind of make sense in that sense. The market order flow, it's a total amount of current buys with the sell orders means that there's a lot of selling. So remember, we went into that stop loss alley where there's a lot of promises to sell, sell, sell. So that's happening. So we do have a sentiment that I should be buying the dip and people are quite eager. And this brings us to the second part of the investment because we actually need time now, Lee. We don't really need to be taking too much action at this stage. We need to be taking time. Mm. Well, there's so, one of the conditions that is there from uh, most of the alts, not, not BTC yet. If I have to follow my strategy, there's actually one chart that is making all time high, which is the market US dominance. Can you see on the screen? Yeah. So the blue line here, I mean, uh, you should know now if you, are, um, if you are following this channel, the blue graphic here, the, the blue line is the US dominance chart. Okay. So that chart is making an all-time high, and it gives us a sign that the bottom is here, or it should be. It should be right, you know, um, not so range. far away. I also did say that because this we are this mature, big this uh, this market is bigger, is more mature. I think it's gonna go for higher, higher all-time high, and that's that's a good sign. I mean, USDT. There's a lot of USDT now in the wallet. People are eager to enter the trade. Like I'm, I'm just waiting for for some sign that can tell me, okay, I'm, I'm good to go now, you know, safe, un safe entry. And every time that this, if the, every time that the market dominance went to this all time high area, we can see that Bitcoin is um, kind of funding this, this bottom, making a higher lows and higher highs and boom, it shoot up. Same here in May, July, Bitcoin fund this bottom here, market, uh, market dominance, USDT market dominance touched this higher area, made a higher high compared to the previous one, and then boom, we shoot up. So I'm assuming that once, you know, we, sh we should be really close to the bottom, but that's one condition. I only have one kind of momentum condition um, saying that the bottom is, is near, is here. But I need to see now in the next days, I need to see some on the press action, on the candle wise, that the bottom is here. Maybe and the only way, on. yeah. Before you move on, I actually um, bring back your previous chart, buddy, on, on that price action. Just quickly bring back your previous chart there. So we're looking at the the, the, dom the dollar uh, or the tether, and you said that there's there's um, there's more signs for an upside, and I, can't, I, I agree with you there. So I'm going to bring up this chart, and this is the oil. Currently, oil is running rampant, and it's just doing insane things. So it's kind of the hope. Of the of the you know the conventional or the legacy markets, and we are getting to a point where this thing is losing a lot of momentum. The RSI is showing us that, so this might be the next bubble to pop. And this might, if this bubble pops with the way that the sentiment is out there, that might be that last bit that we need to get the capitulation. That in in the emotional scheme of things, are not quite there. What do you think? Um. Well, if, if all drop, then we are in trouble as well. Right? So I hope it's going to go and it's going to kill that divergence that we're seeing. We're going to be in trouble, you say. Okay, so let's, let's not, let's not uh, create uh, ghost stories or scary stories here. Uh, but yeah. but, but there's, there's some signs there. Let's just leave it at that. We'll trade it as the market comes. Okay, so we're looking at should I invest now? And you've now taken us to Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, 
I'm following Bitcoin and it, it's going to be the same as the old. My investment on Bitcoin, as you know now, it's I'm waiting for the reload zone, the DCI range. But before that, we do agree that there's an imbalance area here at 34, 36, and price need to capture a little bit of liquidity and it should bounce from here. So I'm analyze, analyzing this chart based on the BS that um, we, we should have a bounce, but I don't, I don't see any bounce. And like I said, I don't trust weekend uh, price action, even though I, have, I can take this candle, but a Sunday candle, we did try to make, you know, to bounce a little bit back, but we did not make a higher high compared to the previous day's candle. Monday, we open, obviously bearish. I don't think that today, uh, when the US market is going to open and trade, they're not going to bring up this whole candle and close green and making a higher high. So first, we are in a good localization. We have pointed out that, lo that localization on the price action of the 34, 36, but I need to see reversal candles. Either one candle that swept, swept the lows and had to make a higher high after that. So this candle, this range a little bit too big in that scale for me. So even tomorrow, if we open a little bit bullish and then the next day we open another green, you know, making higher highs, now we will see a sign of, make, of those daily candles making higher highs and higher lows. And once I see that, and especially if they come and they kill this previous day high, which is Monday today, at 36,000 uh, area. Now I, I can say maybe we have a change of momentum in terms of the candles in the price action. And if we have now this divergence, it's gonna play out. So if, if the divergence playing out, we're gonna probably make an A, first wave A or one, and I will wait for the retrace on the second wave, and then I will take a trade for the bigger move. So assuming this is the low for today, Assuming today, tomorrow, or Wednesday, we make a higher high, we come to this small imbalance area. My next trade, I will wait for the price to come back. Making higher high. I will wait for the price to come back into this 61876 zone. And that will align with your strategy, Rodo, waiting for the higher high, come back to this hidden demand zone on those candles here, and then shoot up to make another higher high. So I'm, I'm gonna try this scenario like this, okay? And then after that, I can say, on a on a on a on a midterm or short term, bottom is in because we will have made higher lows and higher highs. So this bottom is in in a short term. And based on that analysis, we're gonna turn bullish and trade and and, uh, and treat this trend as gonna last forever. And who knows, we can go from here to 45, 46, or even 50k. But first, we need you know this this condition to form, change of momentum. Uh, localization is good. And then if I trade like this, I will be maybe able to buy back at 35, even 35, 34. It will be the same price that if you if you want to catch a falling knife at right now, you know, the, the retrace on that, you, can, you could come to the same price range, but then you will have a level to put a stop loss. So for me, That's it's true. a much safer trade than taking uh, taking a position right now when the price is dropping, like uh, like you don't have the bottom yet. That's true. And the sad thing or the scary thing about the way that the price is printing and um, it's just this, that normally when we have these enormous candles with a holding pattern, it normally gets followed by another candle like that. So I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm not trying to predict whether that happens. That's normally how any of these candles look. In the beginning of the making you know there's a little bit of consolidation then it keeps on falling now that would be bad because then we're gaining momentum to the downside and the idea is that these candles should now start at some stage become smaller uh if they don't become smaller that's a bit of a problem so the best way that i can look at this and say for me to see that if i want to start investing in the range and to to try and get to a point where i'm comfortable that there isn't a lot more downside coming would be to do this. Just take the simple Bitcoin price action as it is and take your FIB level. And you don't need to worry about the time zone as such. Uh, take your FIB level to the top where we were at 69. Take it to the bottom. And I'm going to treat this correction or dump of how you want to call it as so this simply this what do we know 
we look at this and I'm just going to go over to the daily just to take away a little bit of the noise. This is the trend. What do we normally see when we want to start taking profit? We start seeing price falling below the 23.6. And when it normally opens and closes, that's when the possibility for the 38.2 starts kicking in. Whether we then consolidate and continue, completely different discussion. So the first thing that I want you guys to do now from this point on going forward is just put that little FIB level in there. And if we make lower lows, keep tracking it, keep tracking it. We don't know where it's going to be. And as that happens, we just wait until we get that point where we lose that, get above that 23.6, because that will signify this move coming to an end. Lee, so second question then, is it time to invest? I would want to invest if price starts closing above the 23.6. You, I uh, think you feel exactly the same. You've got a different strategy, though, for investment. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is a completely different FIB tool. And uh, and this is something that you can actually use because you can do it on other coins as well, alts and so forth. And uh, do you really want to quickly want to talk us through one of that scenarios using Cardano, maybe as an example? Um, I will. I can use any chart basically, but um, Cardano or BTC. I, I can in just the range use. at this stage, so it's 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 a it's a good for, a good example of it. Uh, Cardano, where's my Cardano? There we go. That's a nice clean chart. So. Let me delete all the three. Okay, while Lee is deleting his stuff, guys, please hit the like and subscribe button. Um, please, and um, uh, hit that bell notification as well um, so you can get notified when we do these things. We, we tend to stick to the same time. Sometimes time just jumps and we have to do an emergency one. And we would love to have you notified uh, if that happens so that you can get into these streams because a lot of these things can be time sensitive. Okay, Lee. Cardano, we've got a Cardano open there. I wanted to chat with more history, but yeah, Cardano. This is what a uh, weekly chart. Maybe we can we can turn to a daily charts. Okay. So basically, I've got um, a guideline using the Fib label, um, and you know, guys, now I love those um, six one eight and seven eight six range, right? But on top of that, for me. When the price goes up and it retraces, and let me remove the magnet because it will be a little bit easier. When it retraces, regardless of the, uh, which time frame, for Rudo, when he lost 23.6, he get out of the market. So for me, there's another rule. When you lose 32, you come back to 618, So this is the range of the investment, um, where you're gonna put your investment, where, where you wanna buy. Can you just zoom in there, please, buddy? Um, just use your zoom tool, just bring that up for everybody to see. Thanks, man. Okay, so at that stage, Cardano was sitting on the at 0 0.055 cents. It went there, so I took my fee from the bottom to the stop, lose such a two, come back six one eight, and this is the zone that I want to invest. Okay. So that's a, that's a really great way to find your your localization in in terms of the in the price range where you want to put your investment. And then after that, you can do another fib from the low to the top. Now the price run from this low is go, it go, it's, it's going to the going up. higher target. Boom. When you lose such a two. It come back, it did not touch 618. And by the way, the Bitcoin did not touch 618 in May. Come back, make a higher high. Boom, lost that yet too. Where did it go? 618, 786 again. So that is my zone for investment. It went even lower, 618, 786. Okay. And here, make a lower low. So we, we can repeat and do the same exact same scenario from this low to this high. This is the lowest low. Come back, 
Price never dug below such a two, so we are good to go. Price is running up, never touch such a two. Call higher. Lost such a two, come back, really strong, hold above the 618. And then it goes higher, 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 but if I take that fib now from this bottom to the top, boom, boom, boom. Here we lost a tier two. We almost come close to 618. And if I take to the recent high, come back, Cardano, come back to the 618. Okay. Another investment opportunity here. Now, these are old. The old has got much bigger price discrepancy, the, the daily ranges, the daily range and um, volatility. So I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin has to drop a little bit more for Cardano to come to 786, even 887. There's another line that you can use for weaker coin. There's an 887, 0 0.887, boom, and that line. So if you want to invest and you don't have a you know, lot of trading skill yet by interpreting the price action and everything, this zone, 618, 786, 887, it will be the perfect investment zone area. So you can start later in, in this kind of zone here. That's where you don't so you can find, that. yeah. If you can find any alt that is inside this zone and you think that it's, it's something that you like, it's a good project and everything, then you can later in within, those, within this area. Because chances are the big institution, they are also loading their bags here within this area. Okay. So if I, okay. if I have to come back to BTC, then the BTC for me, the 618 and 786 is definitely not, not in that, inside that zone yet. So that's why I'm not, I'm not so keen to buy BTC at, at, as we speak. Okay, so the, the question is, should I invest in Bitcoin now? It's not in the investment zone yet. Yeah. And it might not get there. It might still be part of its impulse to the way up. We don't invest as it goes up. So that's the, the guideline that we would want to use. So we want to be looking at projects like that, and then we can invest, reinvest or invest in them. And that's the general takeaway. So if we talk about the, uh, the if we re take everything and we just crunch it into one sentence, is the time to invest? It's only time to invest when once we reach that localization that is between yeah, the but the best the best is if you learn how to interpret this price action wait for the momentum to change so you can start investing it's still time yeah, because and, we are and, inside and this zone the zone is good but you need another confirmation which is the momentum change now on the short term from all-time high to to where we are today the momentum is still bearish okay lee is it safe to trade now we've talked about this and um i'm going to bring up my screen we, we talked about this now We've given you guys the, the big range and we've shown you when to invest. So safety trade, it is way simpler in that sense. And you can always apply this to your investment as well by trading just on very large time frames. Safety trade means simple. This was the buy zone, but we don't buy the buy zone until the confirmation is there. What would be the confirmation? Well, this is now us creating a low. That low comes with, if we flip into a lower time frame. That, that then becomes our higher high level. So if that is the higher high level, when do I think about trading in Bitcoin again or in any other alt? Remember, you now can take this to any other alt. Well, first thing is, I would want to see us break that level, that price point, which currently sitting at 37,976. But that's the current range. So if this is the ultimate low, we don't know this yet. This is the ultimate low price from where it's at now on the opening of this new four hour candle is going to have to start doing something like this and find myself a higher high. And then I'll trade. How long will I be trading for? Very short time frames. Why? Because we are still tracking this large downwards trend. Break that trend, I would then start trading swing trades. I would then want to try and grab a little buy and see again if I can get above 
uh, 50K or swing it for a few weeks or a few months because at least then we are not in this downwards momentum. So any trade that we will be taking, even if we do it this, if it's below this trend, we are still trying to pick bottoms. So you're going to have to manage your risk around that. Okay, Lee, buddy, I think we've answered both, uh, all three of those questions. And uh, let me just quickly see in the comments if there's anything that is worth noting. Um, I think that's it. Do you want to end it for us? Um, yeah, so like I said, today the most sitting on your hands, not trading is also actually in a trade, sitting in the US dollars. Um, I, would, I would like to add, you know, is it is it a time to trade? We can trade every single day. I can trade on five minute chart and get in and out within two hours. That's a trade for me. Um, so I think the question is, <laughs> is it time to long the market? Wait for the confirmation, guys. Wait for your higher high. It can be a different time frame. That's about you know your your style, um, your trading strategy. Um, higher high can happen in different time frame and act act on that time frame only. A higher high on a 15 minutes doesn't mean that's going to make a higher high on one, on a daily chart. That's true. Okay, guys. So thank you very much, Lee. Um, thanks to our team. Thank you for supporting us. We really do appreciate you. Uh, oh, Lee, we've got a little bit of time. Can we quickly look at the crypto EMC indicator that we updated over the weekend? Let's let's stop. Let's quickly look at that. Um, I'm going to bring up a chart for you guys. Uh, we shared the indicator and we did say that we will update it. So what I've done is I did update it for you guys. And uh, I just quickly want to, in a nutshell, run through this. Uh, with you guys. So I'm going to bring up my screen quick, quick, quick. In the meantime, if you like the content, hit the like, share it. Yeah, do that. Do all those things. Lee's got it down pat now. <laughs> Lee, <okay. laughs> Let's quickly have a look at this. Okay, so the, the idea is, remember, we've got different theories about moving averages and all these things. But what it's done is I've taken three basic indicator set, uh, sets. And without now the RSI, without incorporating this just yet, just to keep it simple, this is not the one strategy to rule them all strategy. This is a training wheels strategy. It's something just to assist you with, to help you when you're looking for an entry to try and see whether this is kind of lining up in the scenario that this strategy uh, points. Because if you're looking for a long when it's not aligning with that theory, Basically, you are going to be taken. You're going to be get. Uh, you're going to be get get taken out. It's not a buy the dip strategy, and it's by far not the most accurate out there. It's just to help you get your training wheels. Okay, so Lee, it comes with a lot of cool things for you. There's all the moving averages and so forth. Should you uh, should you want them? Uh, and I think by default it comes with all the moving averages switched on. Now, who can trade with? Them? Crypto EMC littered over the screen. I don't. And I wish there is a way that I could not have that there. But if I put the name labels on, it takes the indicator and what it represents and puts it together. And there is no way that I can, with my limited coding skills, probably fix it. If you do, please, if you can, please drop us a comment on Twitter. And uh, let's update it. Let's make it even better. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to switch those uh, moving averages off. Uh, there we go. And for there's those gamble, that are, there's a gamble line. What is a gamble line? <laughs> ah, you see, you see the gamble line. Well done, Lee. Uh, and just for those that maybe have it loaded but don't have the labels and want to have the label, the easiest way is just to right click on your screen and you'll go to the settings at the bottom. You right click a little higher. There we go. Settings at the bottom, and you're going to go to status line, and there's the indicator title. So that is what gives you the name. Uh, no, no, it's not that. Indicator. No, man. It's supposed to be that. There we go. Sorry. Scales. You're going to go to scales. Indicator name label. And indicator last value label. So if you want to change them and make each one a unique color so you don't have to see the name label, just go switch it off. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to leave it on. So now I think there's five lines. But only to print. Lee, what do you want to say? I think, guys, you can play with the indicators and play with the functions. You're not going to break it. If, mm. if, if it doesn't look good anymore, you can always come back and uh, apply default. And it will come back yeah. to the original stage. It goes back to normal. 
Okay, cool. So the idea is very simple to say. When we look at the Bollinger Band, which is basically the upper and the lower range, all that Bollinger, the Bollinger Band group tries to do is try and estimate what would be the max top and downwards potential for the day. That's the goal. There's a lot of strategies to use it within, but that's the, the essence of it. So if I use that and say, okay, right, where can realistically the top and the bottom, that's the two lines that I want to be looking. So there's an upper range and a lower range. The idea is then it can help you manage your expectations. Okay, then I use the Ikimoko, and the Ikimoko has got various different trading strategies again, but I just want to look at one specific thing to the Ikimoko. Normally when there's support that will hold, it gets printed with a, a cloud that has a very long flat level. And when there's the same is true for resistance. So when the cloud is gray, it's resistance. And when the cloud is green, it is support. So the idea is then if the daily range lines up where there's a lot of resistance, that would be a good area to start taking a short or shorting the market sell. And when the daily and the upper, the lower range lines up with an area where there's long, flat support being printed, and remember the cloud prints ahead in advance. So you would, by that stage, already see that you at the bottom of the expected daily range. You're in a scenario where the cloud is doing its thing. It's printing us a flat bottom. So it's showing us that there's support. That's a good time to start looking in your own specific strategy for a buy within that range that's all it, it's like i said it will not give you tops and bottoms it's just going to give you mid-trend trades it's a simple safe and easy way to trade and then lastly there's the gamble line lee now the gamble line is when you have a 50 50 upside downside potential so the only thing that you always have to do when you think when you look at the gamble line is if you've got that little feeling inside you that you feel like you want to FOMO in. So in the future, when you have your strategy sorted and you've got everything that you would be comfortable and you, you know how to, how to trade and you want to just, just trade price action or whatever you want to do, you can actually go and switch off everything else because you don't need it. It's irrelevant. But the gamble line is your FOMO checker. If price is currently here, and the gamble line is saying 40,997. That's the area where most traders will start FOMOing in. That's the place where if you buy at that level today, where the most loss will occur. So that's just a way to keep you from, from crossing the edge because we tend to miss some of the lows. Say it's prices moving up, you want to buy there. That's still fine. You're not at the gamble level line. But if you want to, if it starts bouncing and it's got going up quickly, like a quick candle reversal, don't FOMO by there because that's where the gamble line is. And on every candle, the gamble line will adjust to a new level. And that's it. So that's the indicator in a nutshell. Lee, anything interesting you might have seen or you want to add to this? I don't know that, that strategy, but yeah, <laughs> I can't add anything on that. I would, okay. I would just like to add maybe, I mean, when, when we started trading, um, three indicators, the free account on trading view was definitely not enough. Uh, we had like, I don't know, you know, eight, 10 different indicators on our charts. But as you progress, you're gonna see, you're gonna remove them one by one. And you're gonna end up maybe with only one RSI or sometimes even you don't need an RSI to try. And this is the journey of a, of a trader. You start with 10 different indicators and as, as you get more, familiarize with the price action and, this, and the, your strategy, you're going to tend to remove them one by one and your chart will, be, will look uh, clean. Hence, this is why it's a training wheels mm. indicator. It's not the one to rule them all. It's the one to help you find your feet. Right. Yeah. Lee, I think we've done it. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, this was a fun one. Uh, there's so much potential in the market. We just have to be a little bit patient and wait, wait for it to happen. Um, that's it for me. I'm ready to bounce. You, Lee, ready to go? Ready. Cheers, everybody. See you tomorrow, same time.
What, what happened to your bouncing ball, Rudo? I've inflated it so hard, it's not bouncing, buddy. It's stuck. <laughs>